What's happening everybody? The Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. In today's video, continuation of testing equipment with the new test bed system here, Destro, the Thermaltake Distro DistroCase 350P, and the specialty of today is a 4090. MSI was kind enough to send me an RTX 4090, their Gaming X Trio. It's, it's large and in charge. It's, it's no joke. Um, you might as well like just put it on your shoulder and just walk around with it like this. Um, or be like Mr. T with like a gold chain and because you need something, you know, robust to put around your neck to hold this thing. I don't know where I'm going with that, but it, it's serious compared to a 3090 in size and girth and weight and everything. And we need to see if it's actually worth it when it comes to real world applications as well. So there's plenty of benchmarks out there for how it's running in GTA and, you know, uh, Apex Legends and all that stuff. Me, I'm more of a, you know, a Star Citizen type of guy. I love Star Citizen, but also a lot of video editing too in DaVinci Resolve specifically. So I'm going to run some of the benchmarks of like Time Spy, Fire Strike, and all that stuff to give you a sense of where a 3090 is at. Compare that to the 4090 here by MSI, but then also show you the real world time is money type of thing. Is it worth it to get a 4090 if you have a 3090? That's what I want to get into. Sure, gaming in 4K, 144 hertz and all that stuff is fine and good. And yes, I, I love it. Um, so if that's what you're into, 4090 is definitely the way to go. It, it kind of crushes the 3090, no joke. But if you're gaming at 1440p or 1080p, 4090 is not for you, to be honest. But uh, sometimes you're just an enthusiast. You know, you need every single FPS out there, you know, every last bit of just that high refresh rate. And so a lot of people are just like gung-ho, super try-hard 1080p gamers, and they are gonna want that 4090 as well as the highest possible uh, processor that you can get too. So what we're gonna do here is run something called Optimize Media in DaVinci Resolve, where when you have a large amount of files, sometimes it makes sense to actually um, uncompress those video files because when you're using a Sony camera or Canon camera, camera or whatever type of camera, it's basically recording uh, in a compressed file format. It's a format where you don't really want to try to edit in. You can, but it's not always going to be the best experience if you have a low-end, mid-tier type of PC. If you have a high-end PC like a Threadripper, uh, like right back here, Threadripper 3970X, Typically, I don't have to optimize media because you have 32 cores, 64 threads. I just throw the files in there and start editing away. But with a 7950X, it's almost there. It's like a baby Threadripper, um, but not quite as robust as a Threadripper. So I still kind of like to run optimized media. So I put my files in here. My very last YouTube video was about um, Arctic uh, thermal pads, and that was about 45 gigs worth of 4K video. So it's actually right here. And um, what I tend to do in DaVinci Resolve is just kind of highlight all, right click, and then you can just click on Optimize Media. This comes up, it starts to hit the, uh, bring this up real quick here. It tends to hit the CPU pretty okay, as well as the GPU. So the 3090 now is at like basically 100% utilization, 98% utilization. And it's saying it's gonna take about 16, 17 minutes for this to run. So again, 45 gigs of 4K video files. That's kind of common with some of the projects that I film. And then um, we're just gonna time this and see exactly how long it takes. So I'm gonna do this with the 4090 as well. All right, so we're all done with our benchmarks for the 3090. Time to stick this MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 4090 inside of Destro here. 7950X, 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM by Kingston Fury at 6,000 mega transfers. Yeah, I think this is a, a nice combo. We are five minutes into running optimized media, so decoding 4K video files, and the fans aren't even spinning on this MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 4090 does have a very robust uh, cooling capacity, put it that way. So impressive, yes, but in terms of the video decode utilization, it's still kind of low. You know, it's 
a lot lower than what the 3090 was, which was around 83%. This is kind of maxing out at 55, 56%. The temperatures are great. 62 degrees is the max temperature on the GPU right now. And of course the VRAM is 70 degrees. And only just now, we're about five minutes in, have the fans started spinning. And they're very quiet, so not bad. And we're back everybody. So this has been a fun experience for me doing all the testing on the MSI Gaming X Trio, their RTX 4090 GPU. Yes, it is big. Yes, it is hefty. Yes, it is thick. Yes, it is large. Uh, use whatever words you want. But in the end, because of its robust, in other word, uh, size with its heatsink, a lot of the tests that I was running, the fans weren't even spinning because these heat sinks are just so large. It's just able to just naturally dissipate a lot of that heat with no airflow whatsoever. And then when it hits around 60, 62 degrees Celsius, then you'll see the fan start to spin up a little bit. But this thing has just been entirely quiet. So definitely kudos to MSI for this engineering. And it will allow you to play AAA games or like Star Citizen Alpha games where this is 4K, ultra settings, and no matter what scene I'm in, I'm, many people aren't familiar with Star Citizen, but it's an alpha game, not optimized at all. And this thing is getting from say 70 FPS in cities to like 120 plus FPS, like flying around. And uh, that's highly impressive for Star Citizen because it's an alpha game, not optimized at all. At the end of this video, I'll do a little bit of uh, footage. So stay tuned for that, but highly impressed. Now, when it comes to video editing, I did run into a little bit of a, an issue. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so uh, as a recap, basically when you're importing video files into DaVinci Resolve from like a Sony RX100 Mark VII camera, uh, very standard 4K 30 FPS files, uh, sometimes you may want to run optimized media and actually uncompress those files. So for a project in particular that I did, I had about 45 gigs of compressed regular you know, file footage for videos. And then when you run optimized media, it uncompresses it to about 396 gigabytes. And so that's one reason why a lot of content creators have lots of storage space as well, because 4K video takes a lot of space. Now, normally for like my 3090s, it averages about 14 minutes to do a 45 gig video file like that, or multiple files at the same time. And for this 4090, it was taking about 32 minutes. So obviously something was wrong. So I went back and forth with uh, Blackmagic Design. They're the makers of DaVinci Resolve, the video editing application. And I have Studio 18, so you get all the benefits of running an NVIDIA GPU. It saves a lot of time. But a 3090 outperforming a 4090 by like half the, the amount of time is ridiculous. So obviously if the 4090 is crushing the 3090 and all the other benchmarks, like all of them, it's probably a software issue on Blackmagic Design's you know, side. So I did reach out to Blackmagic Design. I sent them my log files. We had a lot of back and forth. And uh, lo and behold today, came out with uh, DaVinci Resolve 18.1. So it's a new build, had a lot of uh, enhancements on there. And it did actually reduce the amount of time that this took uh, to do that optimized media. So it did reduce it from 32 minutes down to 19 minutes, but the 3090 is still faster. The 3090 is doing the same exact thing. And it went from 14 minutes to about 12 and a half minutes now with this update. So something is still wonky on that side, but re reality is for people that are using a 4090 for video editing, their processors are probably fast enough to just go ahead and start editing that footage and not needing to run optimized media. So it's not too much of a big deal, but depending on how high end or mid tier your processor is, you will, you will actually see a large difference uh, in terms of scrubbing your footage. So as you're kind of finding where you want to be in your video files, uh, scrubbing the footage, you may see a lot of stuttering if you haven't run optimized media. And if you have, it's gonna be smooth as butter. So it really depends on your tastes and preferences, what you're willing to deal with. A lot of times when I'm just about to begin a very long video editing session, I'll run optimized media and everything, go grab my cup of coffee, you know, just kind of get ready. And when I'm back, boom, everything is done. The Threadripper machine that I have behind me right here, it does it lickety split a lot of times because it had dual 3090s 
and uh, obviously 32 cores, 64 threads, 120 gigabytes of RAM. This 7950X is like a baby Threadripper. It's, it's crushing all kinds of stuff. And then you add in a 3090, it was a top tier performer. But the 4090 here, it brought it back some. So with that, a lot of people will get a 4090 because of 4K gaming. And it's highly impressive. This Star Citizen running at 4K ultra settings, the 3090 can do it. And I was doing it for a very long time and I really liked the experience. But you can tell the difference between running 4K and 1440p because we're, when we're running 1440p in a game like this, your frame rates just like skyrocket when you're running a 3090 and like a 12900K, you know, fast processors help. But putting in the 4090, I went from an average all right, so I'm just going to do averages here because different scenes mean different things with Star Citizen. Uh, but for the 3090, on average, I would top out at like 70 FPS roughly. And that's cool and running 4K. 4090, I'm here topping out at like well over 115, 120 FPS in different scenes. So I'd say on average, I'm hitting about 100 FPS with the 4090 and on average 70 FPS with the 3090. So for Star Citizen, that is a huge bump and a noticeable bump in actual gameplay. Uh, so it makes me not want to play 1440p at all running the 4090. Now, there are a lot of other benchmarks that I ran. Let's go through some of them right now. One of my favorite benchmarks to run is actually Blender Benchmark because it allows me to see kind of some of the maximum temperatures when a GPU is actually stressed in real world scenarios. And so you'll see here that for the 3090, the VRAM, the memory, maxed out at about 92 degrees and the GPU itself maxed out at 76 degrees. While the MSI Gaming X Trio 4090 maxed out at 81 for the VRAM and only 60 degrees Celsius for the actual GPU itself. And then the scores are pretty mind blowing. The, the 4090 doubled the score of the 3090 and is doing it with less wattage as well, roughly about 70 less watts. Uh, for the overall system usage with the 7950X, with the MSI um, X670E ACE motherboard. It's, it's really mind blowing to see less wattage being used while doubling the score and obviously generating less heat if less wattage is being used too. So that's really, really impressive. That score of 12,342 is an average of like about eight runs. And then when it came to gaming with 3 d Mark. You'll see here that Time Spy score was almost doubled. Uh, Time Spy Extreme, you know, a great <laughs> increase, uh, just kind of across the board. But when it comes to th something like Fire Strike, you'll notice it's about a 20% increase uh, in performance. And then others, it's almost a 50% increase. So it kind of goes hand in hand with what exactly are you looking for with the, the system that you're trying to build. Is that added cost of a 4090 uh, going to actually be worth it when it comes to what you're using the PC actually for? So I know 4090s are still somewhat hard to find. GPU prices across the board recently, this is beginning-ish of November, have gone up for 30 series and 40 series. Uh, we do have more GPUs coming out on the AMD side as well as the NVIDIA side as well. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see all these price fluctuations for the GPUs. Uh, is it worth it to get a 4090? It depends on your usage and what you're looking for. If you're a gamer that's doing 4K gaming, like this is the HP Omen 27U, 4K 144 hertz display, excellent color gamut. Um, yeah, it's worth it because I see a huge difference in performance versus a 3090. Now, uh, it is a lot of money though, so keep that in mind. We also have 4080s coming out, whatever that 4070 or 4070 Ti-ish, whatever they call that thing, the, the 4080 12 gig that got pulled and then I'm sure something will come up you know, from the ashes of that. And then um, overall, it also depends on what the rest of your system is looking like. You know, So for AMD, that's DDR5 RAM on the AM5 platform. If you're on AM4, that's DDR4 RAM. So there's gonna be some slight differences over time that will become bigger and bigger as DDR5 becomes more and more refined. And of course, having a 7950X processor is exceptional. Star Citizen runs really well on a 5800X 3D processor. And then we also have coming next year, 
uh, beginning of next year actually, the 3D V cache versions of the 7000 series as well. So now may be a good time to build a whole new PC or just wait and you know see what else is coming down the line. But that's technology. The longer you wait, the more stuff comes out and it makes you want to kind of wait even longer to see what else comes out. It's a vicious cycle. So overall, my thoughts are this. If you have a 3090 and you're playing in 4K, the 4090 is worth it. Hands down, definitely worth it in my opinion, especially if you are into heavy load games like Star Citizen. Uh, if you're just doing some light video editing, you may not see any difference, um, to be honest, because if, if you're only editing in like 1080p, you know, it, it's probably not worth it uh, because 30 series are so cheap. You can get a 3070, 3070 Ti and just blow right through apps like DaVinci Resolve very nicely. Uh, 3090s, cream of the crop, yes. Um, but then it really depends, again, on your particular system. So that's why I'm always reachable on Twitter. If you have some questions, just tweet away and uh, I'll definitely see those. And jeez, uh, this, this is just a fantastic card. So uh, everything I've thrown at it, it stayed quiet. And all of the graphical settings and stuff when any game that I've played, World of Warships, um, Battlefield games, Star Citizen, everything's just max settings and just smooth as butter. So this is in a way future proofing your system, which is cool, but uh, it is costly as well. So, and you have a lot of options out there that when I go to Micro Center, I see GPUs on the shelves. They might be priced a little bit higher than a few months ago, but they're on the shelves. So with that, if you have questions, hit me up in the comments below. And um, of course, follow me on all the other social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all that good stuff. And go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and share this video as well. So shout out to MSI for supplying the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 4090 um, as a review unit. This is not sponsored content, so really cool. I just get to say what I want. Um, make sure it fits in your case. That's one of the main things I can say because it's a big boy. It's, it's wide. So I had to actually move the brackets over in order to barely fit this in this system here. And it's an open test bed. So uh, I did do a video showing the front glass on and I have like two millimeters of space and the temps did go up about seven, eight degrees Celsius because of that. Still within acceptable ranges, but uh, it's, it's a big boy. So, all right, that's enough rambling. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.